Greetings, and welcome to another installment from the Patchwork Productions Learn to Crochet for Beginners series. In this video, we will be making yarn from t-shirts. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Stitch, and Patchwork Productions is all about learning and doing crochet. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss another installment. Without further ado, let's get started. This tutorial will be a very fun and practical tutorial, tutorial for crochet. And uh, all you will need is a scissors. What are we doing, you might ask? We are going to be making some very unattractive balls of yarn. But this yarn is very special because it is made from t-shirts. Yes, we will be making yarn from t-shirts. And this yarn from t-shirts is actually very, very versatile, very practical, very usable. Um, depending on how you make it, it's roughly a weight 5 yarn, uh, sometimes you can get it to be weight 6, sometimes you can get it to be weight 4. Um, it's kind of an uneven weighted yarn though because of how it's made. Uh, but this yarn can be used in many different applications, uh, regular things that you'd normally use for crochet and also special stuff. The, the stuff, the projects made with t-shirt yarn generally tend to be just a little bit stiffer because of the way it is. So I'm going to show you in this video how to make t-shirt yarn a very easy way. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the most effective way for, you know, using as much material as possible, you know, but it is definitely easier than some, what someone might do if they tried it themselves. So I have two t-shirts here. I'll just start with one. And uh, making t-shirt yarn is also a great way to use old but decent looking t-shirts uh, to reuse as something you can make something new with. So the idea behind t-shirt yarn is basically that you just cut this whole t-shirt uh, on its the body piece of it in a little spiral until you get, you know, yarn, a little line, string, rope, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there are some things I have to note. Um, once you get up to about here, you really can't keep making the yarn once you get up to around here because um, this is where the sleeve is and that's open so you don't have a continuous go around. You can't keep going. So it's kind of like it kind of stops there for how much yarn you can do. Um, if anyone after this video, after they see how to do this, has any suggestions of how they might use this to continue making yarn, feel free to share, because I personally don't know. But um, generally, you just have to stop right there. The other thing is, you got to remove this hem, because um, it's a little thick and chunky. But don't necessarily throw it away, because if you make enough t-shirt yarn, you might be able to make an elite class of t-shirt yarn with these. Um, I don't know, I might, I might try it myself. So the idea is that you cut in a circle, and the crude and hard way to do this is by doing it yourself. So you just cut a little slit there and just work your way around. But that can get a little tedious and unwieldy, so I'm going to show you an easier way. So what we're going to do to start is we're first going to cut the hem. So you're going to cut into the side of the t-shirt, and what helps is if you try to even out your, your t-shirt a little, um, try to make it as even as possible and then get that that edge piece um, and what I might do as well is make this a little bigger so you guys can see more area so there now you can see just a little bit more space which hopefully is helpful but um, we're going to just we want to have a mostly straight side here now not all t-shirts, or I should say most t-shirts, aren't actually going to be perfectly aligned as far as the sleeve and the seam there. Just so that you are aware, if you happen to be experiencing that, that is actually quite normal for shirts. 
but try to get it as close as possible. Um, and then what you're going to do, if I just shift this down so you can see, is we're just going to cut carefully into the edge. You don't want to cut up. You just want to cut right to the top of the, um, of the seam there, um, the hem. And so we're going to cut uh, carefully. Oopsie. There. Right there. And then just go straight across, aligned with the, um, the hem to remove it. So we're just going to cut the hem off and get as close as you can just so that we can have an even bottom because the hem is already pretty much straight on the t-shirt. So if we cut right up on that, we should get a pretty much straight cut. And you're just gonna do this all the way around because we want to absolutely remove the hem. It will get in our way as the case might be for now. So there. We cut off this, and as I said, don't necessarily throw this away, because you might be able to, if you do enough of this, get enough of these hems tied together and make an elite class yarn. Um, I might try that myself. Um, but for now, we'll just set that aside. And you may have noticed as you were cutting around there that it's a little difficult to keep rotating the, the shirt around so you can keep cutting. That's the same issue you'd run into if you did this, you know, the crude method, where if I just cut into this and started going around to get my strip, yeah, that would be a pain. Um, so instead, we're going to do it an easier way. So with all that turning, we're going to want to straighten up our um, t-shirt again. And even though we don't use the top, we still want to just leave it on our, um, leave it on the t-shirt for now. It'll come off in the end. Um, so don't cut straight off there. Yeah, I mean, technically you could, but for now, I'm not going to. And it's easier now that you've cut the bottom to straighten everything from the bottom um, because you can see the edges where they meet. And you want these edges to meet so that this bottom cut and some of the rest of the cuts are even. So it may take just a little time, but we're going to even this out. So now we have this even, we're going to carefully rotate it just like this. And let's move that out of the way. Check to make sure it's still mostly even, which it is. And now we're ready to begin the fun part, making this job a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut our strips this way. We're going to cut little cuts into it, but we're going to stop about an inch away from the edge. Now, another good benefit to doing it this way, as opposed to just round and round and round flipping your t-shirt, is that generally, <laughs> not in my case, but generally, you can get uh, more even sized strips. Um, because when you're doing it round, 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 it's a lot harder to gauge where your strips are, your size, and keep it consistent. Um, I'm not very good with consistency, but I try. Um, so your strips that you're going to cut, you're going to want them anywhere from one to two inches. Um, one inch will give you a smaller yarn, uh, closer to this size. Um, if you can, if you can see that it's in terms of thickness and two inch will be a lot closer to this size. This is more like one and a half inch. Um, I think the two inch I have coiled up in here, but let me pull out a little loop here. You can see it gets, gets quite thick um, when you get up to two inches. So if you want almost a weight six um, t-shirt yarn, you would do two inches. You would also get less distance in terms of less um, um, yarn yardage, how, ma how many yards you would get or feet. Um, but it would be a thicker gauge, and generally with thicker gauges, you need less of it to make a certain project. 
Um, but if you do one inch, you'll get more of it, but it'll just be thinner. So for me, I'm going to attempt to do about one to one and a half inches. Uh, I'll figure out as I go. But basically you just cut your strips straight across and stop about an inch away from this edge. Um, you don't want to cut it all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and hope that I get some evenly sized strips here. Alrighty here. So, as you can see, I've made my cuts and my strips, and they're not perfectly, you know, the same size and everything, but they are a lot more consistent, at least, um, than doing it this another way. So, we have all these strips here, and I'm just going to do this last piece and show you something. This last piece is right under the, the um, sleeve, and so you want to get that as close as possible. Um, so I'm just going to cut right there and it'll be a little skinny um, if you can see. It'll be a little skinny at this edge just because I can't cut on the hem of the of the sleeve, a little seam there. Um, but it's not a big deal because I can bring it back out to the size that I want right here and keep cutting across just like this. And now there is one thing I'll also say about this method, which could be considered a slight drawback um, in one way or another. It could just be me. This is actually the straightest one I've done. But I found that every time I did this, <laughs> even though I tried to get them all straight, it came at an angle here. So I always had more material here than I actually had left to do at the other end. So what this means is that after we go and finish the rest of this, you'll just have to do one last strip, the crude method, where you just have to turn the t-shirt, but it's only once and it's really only half a turn, um, so it's really not that hard. Um, but for now, we have completed making our strips, so we can just pull this down. It doesn't really matter about keeping it straight anymore. What we're now going to do, well actually let me explain how this works first so that you understand. I'm going to just turn this around that you can see all of these. So the way this works is that we have these loops and remember we're trying to make a spiral. So all we need to do is make the cut in the right place and we'll have a consistent spiral. Here's how it works. Our first loose end is going to be right here. So we're going to cut this so that we obtain a loose end. Be careful to only cut one of your loops. So we have an entire uh, loop here and they're joined and we only want to cut the top one and only right here. So you do want to be very careful of that because if you cut too much you can lose quite a bit of material or have to do additional work. So now that we've cut that, you can see that here, we have our first loose end but it just comes right back to the loop that we had before. So that's not very helpful but it will become helpful very shortly. If we look at this and remake this into the loop that it was before, uh, sort of, well, enough, we can see that this is the top and the loop goes like this. And it'll continue going around like that. So to make the next cut, all we need to do is to take the second loop and do a very similar cut, except if we fold this back, so this is the this is the loop we made the cut from, and we want this loop to continue. So we made the cut here. We made the cut here, and we want the loop to continue going around. So if we take our second loop here and just fold it out right here, we can see how this is going to work. So I'm going to do a quick zoom in so that you can see better. So this is 
quite the the view here but as you can see here this is our loop and to help it continue this is the second loop right here so to help this continue going this way all we need to do is make a cut from this corner piece to this corner piece and again let me just help you because this could be a little confusing or a little hard to follow if this was our first loop like this and this is our second loop like this our pattern is going in a spiral, spiral like this so if this is the first piece the spiral is gonna go all the way to here and then it's going to need to continue and it's continuing will be along this path right to the second loop which will then travel if I can do this travel all the way over to here and then continue so right here I'm gonna show you and make this cut right from the top of the second loop to the bottom of the first loop whoopsie So right from the top, so right from the top of the second loop to the bottom of the first loop, we're going to make a cut going straight across diagonal. And so now what we have is a longer loop. So let me zoom out and show you a large scale, macro scale. So now, if we put this into perspective, we have the rest of our loops going here, across, and we have more strand here. So what we're going to do is take this next loop here, open the top of it to fold it down, so it looks something like this, and we're just going to go from this point to this point. So if you look, this is the loop right here, and we're just cutting right from the top of the next loop to the bottom of the previous loop that we cut. So I'm gonna make this cut, and it's a diagonal right to those points. So that's why you can't cut all the way to the end, because then you won't have this little space over here to cut. And now, our yarn just got longer. So we're gonna do this again. This is the bottom of the loop that we just cut, and this is the next loop. This is the top, so we're gonna open that and we're gonna cut from the top to the bottom. Right there, and we're just gonna cut straight across. And now, it just got longer. So this is a very easy way to do this. You make your, your cuts across and then your cuts diagonal and you can do this very easily and I would think faster than the other method or at least more precise. So I'm gonna go through and finish these making all of my cuts here as I fold back my loops and then we'll see how to finish that last piece up there because uh, it's a little different. So I'm almost done here, but I just want to show you something. In case you're still having trouble understanding how this works, something you can do to make it easier is to just open all of your loops like this. I only have three loops left, um, so I'll just work with these. Open all your loops like this, and wherever you see a straight line going across, just cut there. So this one, this there's a straight line from here at the bottom, then there's a straight line from there, and then this one goes into this, so we'll handle that. But basically, if you open it all up, you'll be able to just cut right down the middle of those straight lines. Um, so just, it, that helps you understand how we do this with the loops. So I'll cut this last one right here.
And now here is where the fun stuff comes with dealing with this. And in this case, we might actually not have to deal with anything because I did it far straighter than I usually do. So if you happen to have a lot more material here, um, which I don't know if I can get away with it, I might be able to. What you would do is you would just take this last piece that's still connected to the full shirt here and you would just do the crude method and follow it along as thick as you would need it, of course, avoiding the hem there. Skirt that and then go straight across to get your last strip here just so that you can get as much material out of this as possible. Of course, this won't be as straight, and especially me doing it is definitely not gonna be as straight, but this will allow you to get just a little extra distance in your yarn. And of course, when you come to the next sleeve, there'll be nowhere else to continue because you cut as close to that as possible. So now all you have to do is cut it. And this is what you'll have remaining when you're done. This little top hat of the top top half of the shirt with the sleeves. And as I said, this is the straightest I've ever cut it. I've always had quite a large gap there that I had to cut. Um, so I'm I'm very pleased about that. But for now, this is left, and I have no idea what you would do with this to try to squeeze out some extra. Um, feet of yarn so this you really can't do much with unless you have something you do maybe you sew or something and now you're left with all of this which kind of looks a little weird and definitely not quite like this because there is one last step to turning this into this and that step you must be very careful with is to pull the yarn so after I've jumbled up all of my yarn and struggled to find the end, we are going to pull this. So we're just going to take a small section, maybe this amount, and we're just going to pull it. And what happens is, when you pull this, it curls. So you see, this side that we pulled looks quite different from this side that we haven't pulled. And this is how you finish making the yarn. You just pull it. Um, and you want to be careful because if you pull it too hard, well, it could break, it could rip, it could tear. So you want to just gently pull it. Um, and you just go down the whole length of it. So just pull in little sections and pull it till it all curls up. And then you're done. And what I like to do is I pull it in this section and then when I go to ball it up I do it a little tighter than you might normally ball up yarn or anything uh, just to get a little extra pull in there and keep those curls nice um, that you don't have to do that but I just do that so I'm gonna go through all of this um, this can be probably the most tedious part of the entire yarn making process um, for t-shirt yarn but you know it's all worth it so I'll be back when this is all done, and then I can ball it up. Oh man, okay, I'm done, uh, literally. <laughs> um, that, that took a while, 
it actually it actually builds muscle man when you're just pulling like this uh, it's also tiring mercy um, but this is the finished product and believe it or not you actually get just a little extra distance out of your yarn by doing this as well by uh, making it curl you stretch it just a little so there's an extra benefit to doing that but it also finishes it off as yarn and not just sheets of t-shirt so uh, yes this is how you make t-shirt yarn very versatile yarn you can make it from any old t-shirt you have lying around or if you get old t-shirts at like a thrift store or something uh, you can get them probably for cheaper than you buy yarn uh, so if you if you don't have access to yarn, this is a fine alternative. Uh, of course, typically weight four yarn is used, and it can be a little harder to get t-shirt yarn as weight four. But maybe with some close precision, you can be skillful and do it. Um, but also, this t-shirt yarn can be done with any color t-shirt. I just had some white tees uh, laying around. But if you have a red t-shirt, a green t-shirt, a gray t-shirt, brown t-shirt, you know, blue t-shirt, you can make whatever colored t-shirt yarn you want. Uh, and you can use it just as regular yarn. Now there's one more step to completing t-shirt yarn in the sense of it being able to be used, because you can use this right now but it probably couldn't make much because, let's be honest, it's not that much yarn. But the final step is knot tying, uh, which sounds a little ridiculous, but basically, after you cut up a bunch of t-shirts into little bundles, I'll just use these two bundles here, you basically take your ends and you tie them together. And there's a, there's a nice way you can tie this, let me see if I remember how to do it. Basically, let's just twist that a little, uh, let's take this side and make a knot. I think I remember how to do this. It's a little awkward. But uh, you make a knot right at this end. Okay. And pull it so it's fairly tight. And then with this one, which undid itself, we're just going to twist it once and then make a knot on this end and pull it fairly tight. I could have done it so I saved some of this yarn here but that's okay and now we will it work? Yes it will! Yay! You pull that tighter, pull that tighter, pull these closer together and now we've just joined our yarn balls uh, with a simple knot that hopefully won't be too visible in a project. I mean, it'll be a little, you, you'll, you might be able to see it if you're looking for it, but it's a lot better than trying to just tie some clunky knot together. Um, and there we have it. We have two balls of yarn that are now joined and we get more of it and if I wanted to of course this is a slightly different size so I didn't want to join it these two these are closer in size um, and I kind of want to keep it consistent but basically if this were closer in size you tie that and you now have three balls tied together and you could just keep adding it till you have jumbo rolls of t-shirt yarn that you can use in whatever projects you would like um, I typically find t-shirt yarn being used for like almost like the way cotton yarn is suggested to be used as like a household kind of a thing so you you make stuff different projects for things around the house baskets mats um handbags those sorts of things um pot mats rags for cleaning i mean because if you get t-shirt um if you get cotton t-shirts which is what i have um cotton is really great at holding heat so if you do anything with the kitchen crochet stuff cotton really helps so yep there you have it an easy way far easier than what i first tried um to make t-shirt yarn you can get consistent sizes a lot easier by cutting it in strips and then cutting those those pieces now the way I explained it may have been a little bit more confusing, so feel free to go back and see it again, or if you have any questions, 
feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer it. I may have said it a little confusing, but believe me, that is a lot easier than going round and round with the t-shirt, trying to keep it even, trying not to cut the wrong thing. So, yeah. There we have how to make some t-shirt yarn. So for now, that will be all for this video. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more about crochet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and also share this video with your friends and family or on social media. And feel free to leave a comment down below. If you have any questions or suggestions or any feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, catch you later.